Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about different distance metrics that that are widely used uh, when, when it comes to machine learning algorithms. Okay, so this video is going to be important. So please watch it till the end. Uh, you will also understand how if the features are varying largely between small and large value, how the Euclidean distance will have a different effect. Okay, on those set of features. This part is also important in order to understand the k nearest neighbor classification and regression algorithms okay so please watch this till the end let us start so mainly we can say that we have two different distance matrices that are widely used there are many other distance metrics i will cover them in my other videos but as of now you just uh, take it for my word that euclidean and manhattan distance are the widely used there are um, other distances as well which are used depending upon the use case scenario okay so the first one is Euclidean, second one is Manhattan and the more generic way to represent both of them is called as Minkowski. Okay. So what do we mean by Euclidean distance now? So let's consider two data points, right? So let's consider two data points P and Q. So let's call this as Q and let's call this as P, right? Forget about X, Y, Z and other kind of axes for the moment. Okay. So let's say this Q is formed with Q1 and Q2 dimensions. This P has P1 and P2. Okay. So each of the data points are formed by two dimensions and respectively they are represented as Q1, Q2 and P1, P2. Okay. Now, in order to understand Euclidean distance, you may need to understand Pythagoras theorem okay so what the Pythagoras theorem states so the Pythagoras theorem states that in any right angle triangle let's say a b c the length of the hypotenuse a c is equal to square root of a b square plus b c square right so this is what Pythagoras theorem states so we will apply the same Pythagoras theorem for calculating Euclidean distance on a two dimensional space so the distance between point Q and P is given by, so distance between point Q and P is given by square root of Q1 minus P1 square plus Q2 minus P2 square. This is in a two dimensional space. Okay. So just understand this Q1 minus P1, Q1 minus p1 this point here q1 minus p1 gives us this particular length okay and similarly q2 minus p2 if you treat this as y axis q2 minus p2 will give us this particular length so in order to find the length of this particular hypotenuse we are just summing the squares and taking the square just like in Pythagoras theorem we are calculating the Euclidean distance between q and p this is in two dimensional space but what if we have n dimensional space so in order to calculate distance between two points or euclidean distance between two points in a n dimensional space the generic formula is given by square root over square root of i is equal to 1 to n okay q i minus p i square okay now you n here denotes the number of dimensions Okay, so this is a generic way how we can denote Euclidean distance and using a simple Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate the distance between two points as a Euclidean distance. Okay, and the formula I have given it here. So if the number of dimension increases, you just expand this particular generic formula with n equal to those many number of dimensions as we have. Okay, so this is about Euclidean distance. Now there is some problem with this Euclidean distance. I will talk about that when I am talking about Minkowski, a generic way to represent both these Euclidean and Manhattan distances. Okay. Now, in order to understand Manhattan distance, so I will just write it as Manhattan. Again, consider the same data points. Okay. So, we have the axis here and this is Q, this is P. Okay. This is Q1, comma Q2, this is P1, comma P2. Okay. Now, with respect to Euclidean distance, we applied Pythagoras theorem, right? 
but Manhattan distance doesn't consider this diagonal distance. Instead, it considers this distance plus this distance. It adds both these distances to give us the Manhattan distance. Okay. So, how do we represent it? So, in the Manhattan distance or the distance between Q and P in a Manhattan way is given by D of Q comma P distance between uh, Q comma P uh, that is Manhattan distance is given by absolute difference between Q1 minus P1 plus Q2 minus P2. Okay, So, this is when we have a two dimensional space or two features for each data points. Okay, So, this is how we calculate the Manhattan distance. So, similarly, if we have three dimensional space, the distance between Q and P is given by Q1 minus P1 plus Q2 minus P2 plus Q3 minus P3. This is when we have the given data points with three features. Okay. So, the general way with n features for each data point, the distance between or the Manhattan distance between point Q and P is given by, it is a simple summation of i is equal to 1 to n, right? And this is the absolute difference between Qi and Pi. Okay, so this is a generic way to represent the Manhattan distance formula in a n dimensional space. Okay, so here this particular thing I am calling it as absolute difference, right? So, absolute difference is nothing but if we take absolute difference of 3 minus 5, it will be 2. Okay, 5 minus 3 is positive 2, right? And 3 minus 5 is negative 2, correct? But the absolute difference between 3 and 5 and 5 and 3 remains same, that is positive 2. Okay, so that's what the meaning of this absolute difference. In Euclidean distance, we did not have this absolute difference because we are taking the square squared difference, right? So even if we get arrive at a negative value, negative into negative will turn into positive eventually. So there in Euclidean distance, we did not have we did not have to include the absolute difference, but in Manhattan distance, we have to include the absolute difference. Okay. So, this is about Manhattan distance. Now, there is something called as Minkowski. You guys might be hearing this for the first time, but Minkowski distance is a general way to represent the any kind of distance matrix that is present here. Uh, in more general way, we can uh, represent Euclidean and Manhattan distance using one formula that is Minkowski distance formula. So, the distance between Q and P points in a Minkowski distance way is given by, let us say we have n dimensions. Okay, So, summation from 1 to n, absolute difference between Qi minus Pi, right? absolute difference between Qi and Pi to the power A and whole to the power raised to 1 by A. Right? So, this is the Minkowski distance formula. So, now just take this formula and let us substitute A is equal to 1. Okay? So, if we substitute A is equal to 1, what happens? Distance of Q and P is equal to summation I is equal to 1 to n Qi minus Pi to the power 1. Okay? And whole to the power 1 by 1. This further simplifies to i is equal to 1 to n, summation over i is equal to 1 to n, absolute difference of qi and pi. Correct? So, if you can relate it, if you can correlate it, this formula with respect to Manhattan distance, these are one and the same. So, if we substitute a is equal to 1 in Minkowski distance formula, we get Manhattan distance. Okay? So, in the same way, if we substitute a is equal to 2 in this Minkowski distance formula, we will get q comma p is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n. So, this will remain same q i minus p i, the absolute difference between them to the power 2 and this to the power 1 by 2, 1 by a, right? 1 by 2, right? Now, in other terms, if you simplify this, this will become this 1 by 2 will become square root okay? and this will remain same summation from i 1 to n absolute difference between qi and pi 
square right in general by representation we are maintaining absolute difference because when we substitute a equal to 1 it will be giving us manhattan distance right so this will be maintained but with respect to pythagoras theorem this doesn't really matter right in order to calculate the euclidean distance because anyway we are squaring it so if a is equal to 1 our minkowski becomes manhattan manhattan distance if a is equal to 2 our minkowski becomes euclidean distance correct so now I told you there is some problem with the Euclidean distance if the features are varying largely, right? Now let us consider a feature which is varying very between small and large value. Okay, so the difference between the small value and the large value will be a large value. For example, two minus two hundred, right? So this will give us absolute value of one ninety eight. Now this 198 will be raised to the power 2 and then we calculate the square root of that, correct? So this is not only 198 square, we will add so many things like this depending upon the number of features that we have, right? Correct? So if the features are varying between small and large values in a very large way, the features which are varying largely will have major impact on calculating the Euclidean distance between the points, okay? So this is not a desired behavior in any machine learning problem. So to avoid this kind of influence of the largely varying vary, uh, features, we will scale the features, scale down the feature value, okay? We will scale down the feature value either between 0 and 1, okay? This is called as normalization. Or we will scale down the values in such a way that the mean of the feature will be 0 and standard deviation will be 1. Okay. So, sorry, this first one, this is called standardization. Okay. I think I am confused again. So, this, the scaling the features between 0 and 1 is called normalization. This is correct. Okay. And the scaling down the features value to have the mean value of 0 and standard deviation value of 1 is called as standardization. Standardization. Okay. Why this is called a standardization? Because this will follow something called a standard normal distribution. Okay. So I will talk about distribution in a separate video. But I hope you got the gist behind why we need to scale down the values of the features either using normalization or standardization okay otherwise while calculating the distance between any two given data points the features which will vary largely will have the greater impact on the machine learning algorithm because of the square that we have here so if we do not use euclidean or manhattan if we say let's say we have some distance metrics with wherein we use a value to be 3 so in that case if the feature values are varying largely this will have much greater impact than the case when we are using Euclidean distance, right? So this is very important in order to reduce the uh, reduce such effect. In order to reduce such effect, we have to scale down the feature values. Okay. So hope you guys got and understood something out of this video. If you guys have any questions, please post it in the comment sections. I will get back to you with the answers. Till we see in the next video. Happy learning. Bye bye.